Part 3. Itemization. First and foremost, the moment you start collecting green rare items in this game, you should disable and stop picking up white or yellow items. It will save you a ton of time from getting to town and constantly selling your items. To disable or enable any kind of items, you can open up loot filter and turn toggle on or toggle off some of the quality of the items that will be displayed or will not be displayed in-game. When it comes to rare, green, blue, epic and legendary items that will drop randomly from enemies, I cannot give you full list of every valuable item because of the simple fact luck factor. Do not worry, I will still include some items here that you want to keep an eye on. I also want to tell you what stats you want to have on your equipment. You should know that if a certain gear piece will not have a specific stat, it does not mean that an item is bad. I will just highlight all of the valuable parameters for you. They go as follows. Physical damage, both percent and flat based. Internal trauma, percent flat based. Defensive offensive ability, both percent and flat based. Percent based attack speed or casting speed bonuses. Plus to all skills in soldier or necromancer. Plus to blade arc or horse wave. Plus to certain skills, for example, mark of torment. Percent based physical resistance. Plus flat based numbers to health. Percent based chance to avoid melee attacks or projectiles. Percent based resistances to certain damage types, for example, plus 20% ether or chaos, etc. Plus percent based to maximum type of certain resistances. Increase to armor in percent base. Plus some percent to movement speed. Plus to all around rage, soldier's exclusive ability. Percent based reduced stun or slow duration. Flat base pluses to some attributes, for example, plus 33 to cunning. Those are all the necessary characteristics that you want to keep in mind while planning to wear any item. Once again, not all of them will have such a huge list, and it is totally fine to get only half from it. I say that most important ones would be percent and flat based physical damage, percent based internal trauma, and percent based resistances. Everything else you can count as a bonus. I should have said this at the beginning of this topic, but I will say it right now. You want the heaviest armor imaginable on this character because of two factors. Number one, you want to minimize as much as possible all the incoming physical damage that you will be taking, which forms the majority of enemies' attacks in this game. Number two, you can and will encounter cloth armor pieces that will have same stats which I talked about earlier, but low armor value. On top of that, cloth in Grim Dawn requires investments into spirit attribute, and you do not want to do it. Plate armor requires only physique that you will get over time naturally by various means and it will not take you that long to get the required amount for every armor piece that you want, including Creek set. Same goes for weapons and shields if you decide to wear it. Those items that I will recommend will have only requirement physique. But before you start dumping all the points into this attribute, remember the things that I said earlier about Soldier and his ability to easily get a lot of physique through his and Necromancer Mastery Bar. With that said, no one will stop you should you decide to put all attribute points into physique, so that later on you could re-specialize them with the help of Tonic of Reshaping. This item can be obtained as a reward from some of the quests only tasks in first expansion called Ashes of Melmoth, or it can be randomly dropped from some nemesis bosses that you will eventually encounter in the second expansion.
called Forgotten Gods. Until that point in vanilla campaign, you cannot redistribute your attribute points, so choose wisely. Important to note that those tonics of reshaping will be granted to you on all three difficulties, Normal, Elite and Ultimate, which means that you have more than one try to experiment with your attribute points picture. Now that I'm done talking about those vital stats, let me give you some examples of useful relics, weapons and shields that will help you on your journey. Examples for items I shall start with gear pieces which gives bonuses for two-handed force wave and I will show them in such order assuming you will be completing vanilla campaign first and then you will go to Ashes of Malmud and after it into Forgotten Gods. Same thing I will do for Blade Arc. Now before I begin, I am utilizing Grimtools.com item database and there is a search toolbar in it. I will simply type Force Wave and just like I've told you with the general item description, I recommend you to immediately turn off the common and magic items so that they will not be displayed because you will not be utilizing them anyway shortly after you'll start leveling your character. I typed it all wrong, so let's do this a little bit better. Yeah, there it is, Force Wave. And I will sh the, at the beginning you will see a plethora of items and you'll be overwhelmed at first. By the way, a quick note here, I'm recommending you to utilize Grimtool's database for checking what items you want to get, where you can get it, if it's possible, if it's gonna show a specific name of the boss, or a thing that you need to do, whether it's a blueprint, so on and so forth, this will determine how you can obtain this item. On top of this, it will show the recommended level, requirements from your attributes, general item level, and so on and so forth, every possible stats. So, we are interested in Force Wave. Right at the beginning, there are a couple of useful items for Force Wave. For instance, Guardsman Helmet, required level 15, item level 20. Gives both bonuses to physique, Health, Elemental, plus 2 to Force Wave, and boots to your physical damage. Do note that you can get later on the Empowered version of the same item for level 65. And the stats on it will be significantly better both for your defense and offense. As a side note, there are three categories, regular, empowered and mythical versions of items, on some of them it's possible to collect three versions, some of them only have mythical versions, some just have regular and empowered. But Grimtool's database showed them all, and if you are not aware what items can have or cannot have certain categories, you can check it manually. So Garsman Helm, Helm is your trustworthy ally if you're able to acquire it. By the way, a short breakdown on how this thing works in terms of finding an item or not finding it. If you will not see this line which says dropped from or a line that says blueprint, but there's a two distinction. It can be a blueprint which drops randomly, or it can be a blueprint that you can buy from a certain vendor. This means that this item can be found by you on in any place from any type of enemy. Monster, a boss, regular chest, destructible environment, and so on and so forth. While this guard's helm is dropping quite often at the early stages of the game, um, there are there are still some chances that you will not gonna acquire it, but don't worry, you will still have an alternative. Such as those Devil's Shoulder Guards, a faction item this time, faction, it says faction Devil's Crossing, and once again gives both bonuses to Force Wave, 
increase in your offensive, defense ability, physical resistance, spears, and so on and so forth. This one is for level 35. There are empowered version, of course, for level 70, but this is probably you'll get it on elite difficulty or at the very least at the beginning of ultimate if you want to go in ultimate difficulty that early. I'll skip legendaries for now, I'll focus on the early game loot. Here's also an interesting gloves that you can get. Keep in mind that there uh, are mythical versions. But I do not recommend using them simply because while they are giving bonuses to Force Wave, it doesn't give you physical damage and internal trauma, which our character is aimed to get as much of it as possible. Plus, it also gives some ranged expertise, we're not using any ranged weapons, phantasmal blades, this is a Nightblade ability, we're not combining our characters, or main class or secondary with Nightblade. So, while uh, in theory those items have bonuses to Force Wave on practice, I, on that Knight character I do not recommend to you to use them. Those are legendary. For Force Wave I'm skipping one-handed weapons, because I said at the, at the beginning one-handed Force Wave are only worth it in my opinion if you're gonna aim to get Octavius set, which is a legendary and it's a random drop legendary, so for as a beginner do not even think of using one hand weapon, it's, it's, it's terrible. Same goes with the shield, we are not aiming to get a shield in our hands. Now these are, those are the items that I want to specify your attention. Obsidian War Cleaver. It, ca it's, it comes in different varieties, as you can see the stats on it differs from one another because of the fact that it starts dropping as early as level 30. It gives huge bonuses both, both to First Wave and to its modifier called Internal Trauma. It allows you to add additional casting speed, and in case you have forgotten to increase the speed of your Force Wave, you want to have bonus casting speed. Plus it gives you physical damage, weapon damage, overall a gigantic boost to your strength, and there's also a gigantic list of enemies from which this weapon can be dropped. Keep in mind, of course, uh, that RNG factor is present here, and not all weapons will have the exact same physical internal trauma damage stats that you'll be looking for. Some might have physical chaos, chaos internal trauma, lighting and poison, some might not even have casting speed, and so on and so forth. This is just uh, this item, just like the stats in the general information that I gave to you before will give you the rough estimate of what are the best combination of stats on this item you will be looking for in the end. Well, I'm saying in the end, but I mean the moment you get it. And you can click on it, for instance, uh, let's say you want to see Sharzul the Harbinger of Chaos, it says map. Click on the map, it shows to you on the map. Sharzul is the final boss of Bastion of Chaos, Skeleton Key Dungeon, and it shows the exact location of this boss, marked by a red star. Massacre is an interesting choice when it comes to Force Wave. I would say that you would only need to grab yourself a Massacre if you want to play a, another character archetype, which I'm not recommending for your first time playthrough. It is a Commander class. While it gives bonuses to Force Wave, it also gives a lot of extra fire and critical damage. Our character is specialized, once again, as a reminder, physical and internal trauma, so we are not benefiting from fire damage or burn at all. So skip it unless you're playing a commando, but this guide, uh, it, I'm not gonna cover it. Now the one legendary that I will strongly I'd suggest you to look for at the end game 
is of course Mythical Stone Fist Rebuke. This is by far the best, best in slot weapon for two handed force wave. It is give, it's gonna give you huge bonuses towards your offensive stats, soldiers, plus two to all skills, empower your force wave like there's no tomorrow, gives you less, uh, gives you additional benefits like the ability to reduce the reduce the enemy's defensive ability it also will give you additional range on it basically there is like no better alternative to a two-handed force wave in my personal opinion and in opinion of other players as well another thing that you can get which drops randomly but nonetheless it's somewhat of a help early on Shambler's Heart from Ancient Shambler, this boss you will encounter as early as, well, it says level 8, but frankly, uh, you will get to him, if I'm not mistaken, level 12 or level 13, and he has a chance to drop this amulet, which, yes, it gives bonuses to fire damage, which we're, uh, that we are not aiming to get in this character, but on the contrary, it also gives you physical damage, plus 3 to force wave, minus skill recharge, flat physical, and percent base physical, I forgot to mention this, and increases your armor. The higher this amulet goes in terms of tier, indicating that yes, you will kill this boss on normal elite and ultimate difficulty, the more powerful stats uh, you will get on this ability. I do not recommend picking Shard of Eternal Flame simply because, like I said before, it is mostly useful in the Commando builds, indicating um, by the fact that it gives bonuses also to Demolitionists at the same time with the Soldier. On the other hand, not the metal, but rather the Legend, uh, not the amulet but rather the legendary medal of course at the end game option you'll have mythical sigil of the bear king another super super useful again some might say best in slot medal for any kind of force wave user specifically aimed just like mythical stone fist rebuke to give you a huge amount of bonuses as well as crit damage plus to your internal trauma damage and resistances to force wave When it comes to those rare item prefixes and suffixes, of course, I have told you already multiple times, we are aiming to get physical and internal trauma damage. So, most of the time we will be interesting to have either tactician, warriors on the items that we are gonna collect, and to a less extent commando but commando only for those who are willing to play like commando class but for that night the character that i'm recommending yeah like warrior and tactician is your go-to prefixes and when it when it comes to suffixes of course there's like there's no better way to grab either of supremacy or of the guardian of course, it's not possible to collect all of those items with those kind of suffixes and prefixes, but sometimes luck will be on your side and you might eventually get what you want with the best stats on those items. So those are just a quick rundown on what, those, what kind of items I recommend you to look for when it comes to force wave, two-handed force wave. Now let's switch to Blade Arc. For a second I thought that I will be explaining another skill. Blade Arc. Now for Blade Arc unfortunately things not looking that great at the earliest level because yes it also has a very useful equipment but generally speaking it starts 
in the mid game territory. Even this Baldur's Mask, which both gives you like physical and trauma, trauma damage, bonuses to your blade arc, resistances, it requires from you to be at level 65. Empowered at le mythical version at level 82. However, remember I, I've um, mentioned that I'm also going to be explaining factions? Well, in the next faction episode you will see that I will be praising Black Legion faction because they have such invaluable pieces of equipment and one of it is, of course, providing you bonuses to Blade Arc at level 50. You will have a, an equipment which gives both bonuses to bleeding damage, while not the most important as well as spears, bonuses to Eater as well as plus 2 to Blade Arc, I cannot neglect, so you can collect those kind of shoulder pads if you have no other or better alternatives, I would say. Be wary of those dropped from an enemy which marked by a red light because it indicates the nemesis bosses which are super tough opponents especially early on and chances are you will not encounter them until the second half of elite difficulty anyway but just do not fool yourself but of thinking oh it just says level 50 so i'm gonna kill this guy and grab from him the shoulder pads and i'll be good to go no 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 be very cautious about it this again, Baldur's Mantle, level 65. Basically gives you the full set option. Grasp of Unchained Might, you can get it as early as normal difficulty, if you are, will get super lucky. And it actually gives you both bonuses to uh, Blade Arc, as well as to All Runs Rage, exclusive ability uh, to Soldier. The thing about the Blade Arc, I forgot to mention it straight up front, unlike Force Wave, it scales the faster it, uh, it scales from attack speed. So if you want to attack faster, you need to collect more attack speed on your character, on your gear pieces, and so on and so forth. Yes, it shows this Sanguinius Bell, but I personally never have collected it, just because I <laughs> wasn't lucky. Believe it or not, I, I, I wasn't seeing the Sanguinius Belt at all. Oh, and allow me to explain this line as well. You see, it says Blueprint Sanguinius, but if you click on it... Luckily, it can be sold by one of the merchants. Uh, what I wanted to specify is that it says Ashes of Malmut. All of the items that will have such an such a, an explanation, such a line of explanation here, either Ashes of Malmut or Forgotten Guns, Forgotten Gods, this means not the fact that you will only get them in the DLC. It's just that you will have to have DLC installed with your original game, so that you will, be, you will be having the ability to get those items in game eventually by killing enemies, opening chests and so on and so forth. Just like with Mythical Stone Fist Rebuke, I'm gonna show you again, like I'm gonna backtrack, scroll down a bit. Mythical Stone Fist Rebuke, it says Ashes of Malmud. But one, uh, I remember one time I was getting it from the Vanilla Skeleton Key Dungeon called Steps of Torment. It's not... What I want you to understand is that every piece of equipment that says drops from DLC doesn't mean that it only drops from DLC areas. There are some exceptions, but it usually refers to particular enemy type rather than just generalizing the name of the content from where it can drop. Now this is more like it when it comes to rare items, so as uh, you have understood, when it comes to armor, there are not that many early, early game pieces that you can utilize to boost your physical blade arc, either one-handed or two-handed. But when it comes to weapons, things are looking 
extremely good in this direction. Now, first and foremost, I'm, I want to mention, since I assume that you'll be completing the original campaign first and then DLC second, it's Master X. This gives you good bonuses, both to Blade Arc as well as add weapon damage. And it also allows you to increase your offense ability. Boris of uh, the Master of Pit is actually an optional boss that can spawn in one of the bandits encampments if you open up the map. In Act 2 you'll be facing a lot of bandits and sooner or later you will meet the Boris itself. You can click show on the map, it will load. Yeah, there it is, he'll be on the arena. The spawn is not 100%, but uh, sooner or later, if you'll be lucky enough, you'll find him. And he has a chance to drop this kind of weapon, which also comes in different levels threshold, meaning that the, the more powerful the uh, more powerful is the weapon, it will require from your character to from your character to be at the highest level that's possible. The highest, I assume, is gonna be like level 94. Yeah, level 94. And the next option would be the Sand Claw Slicer. Why is this weapon so good? This weapon is so good, this one-handed axe, just uh, of the simple fact. It gives, unlike the axe, which, yes, it gives bonuses to blade arc, weapon damage, and so on and so forth, this gives more and even better those stats that we are looking to boost. Physical damage, internal trauma damage, chaos resistance, laceration, physic again, percent based physical damage and direct physical damage. It drops from a ton of monsters in Forgotten Gods and you can get it as early as level 20. Now, I was... I am assuming that you'll be completing original campaign first, but there is another option for you, for those of you who are interested to do this in another way around, you can get to Forgotten Gods after you kill Warden Creek, the first act boss, by speaking with the emissary. And those enemies that you'll see here, they are usually located very close to the beginning of your encampment, your conclave of the tree. You can get you can exit from the encampment, you can kill a bunch of enemies, and this is actually a very common drop. Despite it being a rare item, this is a very common drop from them. So you can kill them, and there is a chance that you'll collect Sandclaw Slicer. And just like this axe that I have explained before, it comes in different varieties, and the, uh, the more powerful ones, the better the stats are on it. Maces, I honestly do not recommend you to use maces, either for one-handed or uh, two-handed purposes, simply because they will additionally add the poison duration to your attacks, which we are not benefiting, our character is not benefiting from at all. Another useful thing that I uh, will recommend to all of you who are planning to play as the Sword and Board playstyle is to collect this shield, Kaliska's Harvest. This shield will give you, just like the axe, an overwhelming amount of offensive and defensive bonuses, as well as it will provide you with a decent amount of block chance. But most importantly here, of course, we are looking for the increase in the strength of our blade arc. And this is actually one of the quest boss, so you will not gonna miss out on this shield at all. Because this, uh, to get this shield, you will need to kill a quest boss for the one of the tasks that you'll be performing if you decide to be friendly with your friendly faction called the Outcast. She will ask of you to kill this beast and get the get one item from it. And once you once the beast will defeat will be defeated, it has a chance to drop the shield. Blade Flurry is actually an alternative to your uh, alternative to the Sword and Board playstyle, but this time it's a two-handed version. Just like with one-handed, it gives very good physical, internal trauma percent damage. Yeah, Pierce is not that great to have, as well as Cold Conversion to Pierce is also a stat that we are not benefiting from, but as a 
uh, as an option to play with a two-handed, you can utilize this weapon and you can play with it as much as you want as the alternative to a sword and board playstyle. And finally, when it comes to axes as well as the halberds, so although in this game they are also called the subtype axes, I can say that while axes are... Yes, you can get the blueprints from them, but if I'm not mistaken, this blueprint is also randomly dropped, so you'll never know when exactly you'll get it. Those halberds are pretty common drop once you get to Forgotten Gods. What you will be looking for, of course, is the Corvan Celestial Halberd. Even if you will get the lowest level 1, again it says like at level 20, but don't be fooled. I recommend you to a, I recommend you to start looking for those halberd only when you will be fully clearing Forgotten Gods content. Because those monsters that you'll be facing, unlike the one-handed weapon, they are gonna be tough. Those are gigantic statues with this two-handed weapon in hand. So one of them has the ability to drop the Corvan Celestial Halberg. You see there it's actually super useful weapon because every single stat that it provides, every single one of those stats, is a perfect fit for a physical death knight. Physical damage, flat and direct based, internal trauma damage, either converts to physical, attack speed, blade arc, spectral red. This is actually a modifier to our resistance reduction abilities if you haven't checked the skill version skill video i recommend you to check it before you watch this one i explained to you what this does crit damage to blade dark and so on and so forth it's pretty easy to get it sight i i actually yes sight it while it is an option Honestly, I am rarely seeing. I was rarely seeing the site while I was leveling my character, and I don't think you should be looking for the site as well. God Smasher, of course, it is also an alternative. If you haven't as an end game build, I consider this Halbert an end game weapon. God Smasher, you can utilize this also. You just have to keep in mind the fact that. While comparing God Smasher to the Celestial Halberd, God Smasher sadly loses in terms of damage. But in terms of bonuses, it is capable of giving both to your soldier, uh, both to soldier class and skills, plus two to all skills, as well as bonuses to Blade Arc itself. And finally, there is a another thing that I wanted to specify. Not, of course, not the legendary rings. In terms of low-level equipment, it's the Mogara Sphinx. Rare amulet that can be dropped in the Act 3, if I'm not mistaken, from one of the optional quests. You'll basically have to kill the... Is this the spider? I I, I, I think Mogara is not, it's actually in the spider. It's the matriarch the beast or the black legion quest and she has a chance to drop this amulet this amulet also is perfectly fitting for our death knight it provides physical damage bonuses attack speed plus to all skills in soldier again bonuses to uh, the better the amulet becomes the more bonuses you are going to have but even the lowest level one will be perfectly fine for you, as long as you'll have it. Harvester Stone, again, uh, I'm not talking about those items that will give you the option to increase your bleeding damage. I'm mostly uh, not that much, I'm mostly focusing around physical and internal trauma, and as a result, I about Weeping Ruby as well as Coven Blade Pendant. You can utilize this for Blade Arc builds also. It doesn't matter if you are gonna have it with a one-handed version or two-handed version.
when it comes to Balthazar's crest at the earliest level this again this is the optional boss from bandits encampment you can get his medal and utilize it but the longer the game goes the uh, you'll get less benefit from it again simply because of the fact that it will start giving you fire and burn damage and you do not want any of it additionally the amulet doesn't have doesn't give you any kind of resistances And if you are using a blade arc when it comes to prefixes and suffixes, same thing with force wave, you are interested in warriors, as well as either of tactician, N no not the tactician, but of the, let me double check how it, how it's called. I forgot the exact name of this prefix. Yeah, of Supremacy and of Guardian. So those are the quick rundown which I wanted to that I wanted to show you when it comes to gear pieces for both Blade Arc as well as Force Wave. Early game ones and late game ones. Again, this is not a full rundown on those items. Some items I skipped, some items I have not covered because especially uh, faction ones because I do not know or ran, uh, those are the trend, those items that randomly dropping I do not know how lucky you will become and whether or not you will eventually get it or not but I hope you will have a general understanding of what you want to aim for and what you should get as early as possible let's talk about relics since I wanted to mention them as well I will just highlight the most important ones for you. Bone Talisman, I recommend you to pick it. There is a quest that you're gonna be doing and instead of giving the talisman back to the, El uh, to the robbers, I recommend you to keep them to yourself and you'll get a very useful proc that will regenerate all of your HP. Not HP, but uh, regenerate your energy and gives you the bonus to your damage. When it comes to relics, just like with gear, uh, the most interesting stats that we're going to be looking for is, of course, the physical damage, internal trauma damage, and some bonuses to soldier. And good options would be Mistborn Talisman, Rampage, Juggernaut. Juggernaut is actually a transcendent relic. It's already a more powerful version of the regular one and it also gives you plus one skills to all of your bonuses. And when it comes to legendary relics, I would suggest you to aim for the Allrun's. I, I, I believe it's called Allrun's Rat. No, not Rage, but Rat. Yep, Allrun's Rat. So those are uh, gonna be your relics that you'll be aiming to get again. Allrun's Rat. I do not recommend you to pick Doom. While it is a more powerful version on in theory in, and in stats, I and, and it requires from you to be at level 90 to wear it, or on threat, I think it's more powerful because of the proc that activates 10% chance of you attacking your enemies. It gives you a more it gives you more damage, and it doesn't require you to press additional button. Unlike the unlike Doom Relic, which like I've told you before, I'll show it to you. Once I'll find it. Yeah, there it is. Doom Relic doesn't give you any proc, instead it gives you additional damage, a button that you can utilize, additional skill that you need to press, 
You might experiment a little bit with it, but I personally am sticking with all um, all runs rat all the way through. I think it's a mostly superior version because of the proc that it provides. And this is it when it comes to rundown of the items, brief rundown of some of the early game and late game items, as well as relics that I recommend you to get while you are playing with this game, both for Force Wave as well as Blade Arc 100 and 200 version.